In this video, we're going to solve a simple one-dimensional kinematics problem. Uh, the problem states, a car is traveling in the positive x direction with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. At t is equal to 0 seconds, an acceleration of a is equal to negative 1.5 meters per second squared is applied to the car. And then we're asked some questions. Part A says, how much time does the car take to come to a stop? Part B says, how far does the car travel before coming to a stop? We'll answer those questions in this video and answers, answer part C and D in the next video. So the first thing I did was write down the information that I know. All right, so I have the symbol and the number. If you're taking my class, you know that I'm a big believer in solving things symbolically, but that it's handy to have the number available for the end when you need to find a numerical solution. So I'm told that the initial velocity of the car is 5 meters per second in the positive direction. I'm told that the acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared. It should be a squared. In the negative direction. So I've drawn the picture. Now this is not a free body diagram, so I don't need forces here. right? This is a kinematics problem, which means I'm not referencing forces explicitly at all. But uh, notice the initial velocity is to the right, the acceleration is to the left. That means the car should slow down. If the velocity and the acceleration oppose each other in direction, the velocity will decrease. Right? The car is going to slow down. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at part A. How much time does the car take to come to a stop? Well, if that's the question that I'm answering, I, I know something else, right? Uh, remember the initial and final subscripts that I'm using here are user selectable. This is the initial velocity as long as I care about what the car is doing when I hit the stopwatch. So when I stop caring about the car for part A is when it comes to a stop, right? So I also know now that the final velocity, at least for part A, and for part B as well, because it's the same uh, version of the problem, or same area of the problem, is zero meters per second, right? So as long as I'm just caring about this first part of the motion, V final will equal to zero. So what I need to do now is find a kinematic equation that relates all of these things that I know to time. For part A, I'm looking for time, so I need to relate all these things to time. Well, I've already picked one out for us. And it's this one, V final is equal to V initial plus AT, right? So what we said earlier is that V final is zero, and I know V initial and I know A. I'm just looking for T, so at this point it's a simple matter of rearrangement. I get AT, oh, that's a terrible looking T. AT is equal to minus V initial, I just moved it over. Then T is equal to minus V initial over a. And as far as I'm concerned, this problem is solved at this point. I have an answer and I have an unknown in terms of, of known quantities. Of course, uh, sorry, I just got an email. Uh, of course, if I want to know a numerical solution, I will just plug in numbers here. Then t would be equal to minus 5 meters per second divided by, what is a? a is negative 1.5 meters per second squared, right? You have to keep track of the negatives because there is a negative sign hidden inside A. Look at how we've defined A. A is negative 1.5 meters per second squared. Very often the negative signs appear outside of our variables in the case of the acceleration due to gravity, right? We define it positively and slap a negative sign on the outside if we need to. In this case, the acceleration is negative 1.5 meters per second squared. So I'm going to put that in here. My negative signs will then cancel. And if I run that through my calculator, I get 3.3 .3 seconds. And that is my time. I can now add that quantity over here. Right? So that is now a known quantity. So let's look at part B. How far does the car travel before coming to a stop? So again, I'm looking at the same part of the motion. So my final velocity is still 0 meters per second. However, now I know something else. I know what the time is. It's 3.3 .3 seconds. right? So that is now a known quantity. So what I need is something that relates all of these known quantities to something uh, to the distance that I travel. Right? That's the unknown that I want. So there are actually a couple of, um, of options on the kinematic equations for that. Uh, the one I've picked is this one. It's kind of the workhorse of the kinematic equations. It may not be the 
fastest way to solve this problem, but we're going to use it for this section, right? Notice this is already solved for a distance. Delta x is my distance. It's a displacement, but in one dimension, it's going to practically be the same thing. Not always, but in this case, it is. My displacement from, to, uh, from the initial point to when the car stops is going to be delta x. Uh, that's equal to the initial t plus one-half a t squared. I know all of that stuff. Right, so um, I could just plug all that stuff in at this point and come up with a number. I think it, personally that it's more instructive to actually run through with the symbols and get this in a, um, a simpler format. It's more instructive. It will show you the physics, so let me just do that. Remember what T is? T is negative V initial over A, right? That's from here. T is also 3.3 seconds, but if I'm going to keep it symbolic, T is equal to negative V initial over A. So let me plug that in. Equals V initial times T, which is negative V initial over A, plus one half A, and I'm going to have to square T. T is negative V initial over A, so when I square that, the negative goes away, and I get V initial squared over A squared. So let me put that in, V initial squared over a squared. So this is my t squared. So I have an a in the numerator here, which will cancel with one of these a's in the denominator here. And what I get out of this is negative v initial squared over a plus one half v initial squared over a. Well, negative something plus one half of that something it's just going to give me negative one-half of that something. So this works out to be negative one-half v initial squared over a. All right, and that is actually a pretty significant result. What we found is that it's exactly half <laughs> of my first term, right? That, so you won't always see that. It just depends on how the problem is stated. But very often, you will see problems stated in this manner. Uh, if you do a, a, a problem against gravity, where you throw a ball up in the air, you're going to find something very similar, which is, this is why I like doing it in symbols, right? If you, if you solve this problem three or four times with numbers, you get a different number every time. But if you solve it three or four times with symbols, you start to see this expression every time, and it serves as a check on yourself. You go, oh, I've seen this 17 times before. This is probably right, right? All right, so as far as, again, as far as I'm concerned, this problem is solved. Let's actually run the numbers for to get a numerical solution if we need that. We have delta x is equal, that's a terrible looking x. Delta x is equal to negative one-half v initial squared over a. That is negative one-half times five meters per second. That whole quantity is squared divided by a which is minus 1.5 meters per second squared. Uh, again, my minus signs are going to cancel. And if I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to get 8.3, approximately 8.3 meters. So what we have decided here, what the math has told us, is that in the 3.3 seconds it takes this car to stop, this car travels 8.3 meters. All right, so we still have left to answer part C and D, uh, which we will do in the next video.